Welcome. Um, could you please tell me uh, your name and, and, and why are you here? My name is Jetse Goris uh, and I'm an educational consultant. And I'm here to tell you about uh, a game we're currently finishing up to teach surgeons the basic techniques of laparoscopy. That's a certain surgical technique. And that's yeah. why I'm here to tell you. And, and um, what, well, what's the point, the main point you want to make? Are you here to, to sell this game or to tell people about it? Or? Well, in the first place, um, uh, I'm here to be inspired by all the other examples here. I'm not doing a presentation currently uh, because we're busy finishing up the game and, uh, and shipping it. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that's my main thing to be here, to be inspired, to talk to people, to come up with fresh ideas, to see new technology. That's the main reason. Yeah. yeah. So what's this game about? You say it's about teaching? This game is about mainly about entertaining you, having a good time, just like kids playing. But the thing we're trying to teach you during the, uh, your playing, uh, you're using special, uh, uh, special controllers, custom-made controllers, that mimic the movement of laparoscopic surgery. So normally when you're performing surgery, you uh, make a big incision and you can use your hands and both eyes. Yeah. But during laparoscopic surgery, you have instruments that well, look a bit like sticks and you get into the... Uh, a small uh, hole? Yeah, you make a small hole and you get into the, uh, well, into the body. And then when you make a movement to the right, it goes to the left, so you have inverse movement. And you lose your uh, 3D perception because you're looking at a camera screen. This is hard to learn, very counterintuitive. And what we want to do is, by playing this game, making it intuitive again. And it's a means to... Uh, the controls, you need to master the controls to make it in the game. The whole game doesn't have anything to do with uh, performing surgery. You're helping a robot named Swank uh, rescue a girl, Sari, from a big mining planet. So you have to solve puzzles and use your head. And um, uh, all other kinds of skills are needed of you. But in the meanwhile, you're learning, you're making the movements of laparoscopy. So when you finish the game, you're actually ready to start, uh, um, uh, um, uh, well, practicing to... <laughs> um, what's, the, what's the English word? To, well, to start putting it into practice, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so when you, uh, when you finish the game, you can focus on procedures, on anatomy, on, on all other things that you need to become a surgeon. But the technical skills, that's the thing that you learn on this game, yeah. using this game. Yeah. And, and how do surgeons learn this technique in, uh, Well, up until now? Normally they use simulators and box trainers, and uh, they work, they do, but the thing is, because they focus just on the technical skills, they can be quite boring. So you have to force them, you have to you know, use a stick to, to get them to the training room and to put in the hours. And that's the thing we want. We've, we've made one big shiny carrot and uh, try to, uh, um, well, that they actually want to play this instead of that they have to play this. So, so that's they can the whole play it at home, probably. Of course, yeah. yeah. Normally a simulator would cost you about, well, that starts at around 12,000, 20,000 euros. And when you have a Nintendo Wii U and you buy the custom controllers, you're, you're set. So it, it won't cost at about 20,000 euros. You, you'll be, well, up and running for about five, six hundred. That's a whole different scale. Sometimes when something is really cheap, people don't believe it really works. Because they think it's, it's just a game. Uh, <laughs> Good question. That's why we're doing uh, uh, validation studies. What uh -huh. we've done, we've uh, already validated the controls. So uh, does an expert surgeon pick up the controls and immediately, intuitively grasp what he has to do? That's the case. And also, uh, um, uh, um, does it compare, when you test someone on a validated uh, test score, the FLS, uh, a test from the fundamentals of laparoscopic surgery, if you um, compare the time it takes for them to complete an FLS task and a, a, a task on the game, they correlate. So experts are fast on the FLS test and on the game, and novices, well, they're, they're, they're slow. So this is also, and this is called, well, I'm not going to in, in, in the name of the what kind of concurrent validity I, I think it is. Okay, so, yeah. so that's a, a process you're going through at the moment. Oh yeah. The validation. Well, we did the validation of the controls yeah. and once the game is out, we can, we can do the effectiveness studies. Yeah. We're basing ourselves on uh, 
well, on, on the um, scientific uh, um, uh, data that's out there. So there's already uh, uh, some small proof of that when you play games, you're actually, well, you make less mistakes on uh, a laparoscopic simulator. And when you uh, play games, it actually has a learning effect on your laparoscopic ability. So when we build something that actually mimics the movements and is a game, we expect to have uh, better results even. Yeah. Games for Health in general seem to attract a lot of investment money at this, at this time. Um, do you think that's a good thing? Wow, oh, that's also a good question. I think it's a good thing mainly because um, making a good game takes a lot of money. Because what you see is that um, most serious games now, a lot of them, aren't that, that entertaining, aren't that much of an entertaining game. Mm -hmm. They're very serious. And mostly the production values are quite low. So when you have investors coming in, uh, trying to inv uh, investing money and uh, uh, giving game uh, designers and, uh, and game companies more budget to make a really good game, I think that will help us all. Is this uh, the money thing? Is that a thing you also notice in in Holland already, or is it well mainly an international American thing? In big investors, a lot of money. Since I'm an educational consultant, I'm not really that much into money, but I think what you see is that in America you have, uh, like in Silicon Valley, you have a totally different culture and other circumstances that uh, are make it much easier to invest money. I think in the Netherlands it's still quite quite difficult to have people invest in you and, and uh, uh, well, have an easy way to do this. Yeah, so, how, so how do you pay, well, your game? Oh, uh, how do we pay our game? Yeah, or, or well, uh, where did you get the money from? Yeah, a combination uh, of uh, uh, funding from uh, uh, from out of our uh, out of two hospitals. Yeah. We're working together with the. Uh, uh, I'm from the University Medical Center of Groningen, and we're working together with the Medical Center of Leeuwarden, the Limes Institute. They've invested money. We've got grants, and uh, we have Grendel Games who are making this game. I didn't even name Grendel. Grendel Games from Leeuwarden, and uh, uh, they are also investing money in it. So it's a, it's a cooperative effort because we believe that this is a way to revolutionize skills training. Are there any other important uh, developments in the in the Games for Health section besides money and, and validation? <laughs> Lots. Where to start? <laughs> I think one of the most exciting things about being in this field right now is that you've got a lot of, I think it's, the name is enabling technology. There's a lot of technology out there, like the Kinect, like the Oculus Rift, that are just there, available to buy for a very small price, instead of like 10 years ago where you had to, big, had to have a big R&D lab and things like that. And that's one of the most exciting things, that you can just grab something and try it out. And, uh, uh, and the, the technology is that far uh, uh, advanced that you can do really cool things with it. So it's up for grabs? It's up for grabs. There's a big possibility space of beautiful uh, combinations that, between medical problems and uh, what technology and games can offer. And that's the thing I'm really excited about. Uh, uh, um, what does the, the world look like in, in 10 years time if you look at Games for Health? Will you see a lot of changes? I hope to see um, better games, better designed games, and that we've learned from, from past mistakes. Even more exciting technologies, more wearable technologies, more advanced sensors. I think what we will see is that we have that, that we'll have uh, games that feed off sensor data that you well that you make yourself a combination between the quantified self institute and what you have with uh, with games for health so for example you walking or running offers points in a game that you're playing things like that but that's 10 years from now the things i'm thinking about now are probably <laughs> we'll see this in 10 years and said no nah. <laughs> what's your your own personal uh, favorite of a, of a good game combination uh, well a good example, game, a good game for health. Yeah, still one of the the, the, the poster childs of uh, uh, games for health is still Remission by Pam Cato and Hope Lab. That's the one that really you know showed what you can do, and uh, uh, that was also a game that was uh, 
uh, excellently validated and, and had a big motor center study to prove its efficacy. And I think we can still learn a lot from, from, from that. We were here last last year as well, and then the game uh, remission was, was named a, a lot, yeah. a lot of the time. Does this mean that, well, nothing much has changed in a year's time, or, or, or is, it, is it like no. a slow process, or is it does it take a lot of time for for other good examples to, to come up? I th there are lots of other uh, uh, good examples, I think. Remission is the one that pops up when you think, what's a really good example? Uh, I think there are a lot of other good examples of, uh, of games being used, but, but it's still, it, it, it feels like we're, we're just discovering uh, um, uh, this medium and how to use it. And Remission got it right, but there's lots of it that, that, that go wrong. It all, almost feels a bit like an evolutionary process where lots of things fail and fail fast, and that's what I'm excited about. In five years, I hope we have some design guidelines and some, 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 some things to go by when you're developing a game for healthcare. What, what do you do yourself considering games for health? Well, one of the things is that um, at, as an educational consultant at the University Medical Center, I am the one, I have knowledge of the, the technology in the games world, the health, uh, healthcare industry and uh, education, didactics. And somewhere in between, that's my role. So I come here to, you know, feed off, uh, to, to get new information, be inspired, talk to doctors about this and try to come up with new projects that, uh, that'll that work. But, but do you also use any games yourself for your health, oh. for your own health? <laughs> Well, uh, some, some quantified self things, some RunKeeper-like uh, apps, and otherwise not really much good. I, well, I just had a, uh, I have a daughter one and a half years old, and I don't really have that much time <laughs> That's to That's not play. an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, she, she keeps me healthy, by the way. <laughs> and, um, no, I play a lot of games, though, uh -huh. a lot of entertainment games, so uh, I'm excited about that. It's also a really good question. Do I use games for health myself? Yeah, just just mainly quantified self, gamified things. But well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.